Have you ever been just sitting around, suddenly a thought pops in your head and you start thinking about it and it results in a question that you can't answer? Now I know that makes no sense to you but right now, but it will in a minute. So um, if anybody can answer my question, why would I, me, in this shop, want a matched pair of V-blocks. So here I'm just messing around with some V-blocks and then I'll also share some finds. See you next time. All right, I'm just gonna be rambling on here, so. But I was thinking about these V-blocks and they're Sterrett, right? Yeah, LS Sterrett. And I suspect they're a matched pair because they are someplace here serialized. It's on that side, yeah. There's a serial number there, 364, and same way on this one, 364. So I'm assuming they're a matched pair. But I already know in the past I've run the indicator over surfaces and the, the outside, no. <laughs> one of them's angled some which way and so on and so forth. But why would you want a matched pair? What's matched? You know, suppose they are like perfectly exactly the same. Um, I don't think you can, because you're usually just using one in the vise. The only time you'd want a matched pair is if you're trying to support something long in the groove. But I was thinking too, you know, um, what do I care about? I care about this groove. And so I was thinking, well, everybody's wiped down here. They're all clean, all done. So what I care about is this groove when I'm putting it in the vise. Therefore, I care about this groove with respect to this back surface. So gauge pin sticking in there. I, I don't know if I can see or not what's going on, but if I come over to an end, this is gonna to be tough because this is the 10th indicator. Yeah, okay. So maybe you guys can see I why did that move now? Everything is, I'm pushing all over this block and it's not moving. So it's solid, but I'm getting different readings. Yeah, see now I'm getting a lower reading. Oh, because I was out here before. All right, so that looks like that's up about two tenths. Can I get it any higher? No, drops, two tenths. So if I come over here and check it, That's way off, folks. That's more than a half a thou. That's almost a thou off crooked. Right? Can you get any higher? No, that's the peak there, which is two tenths under. So, eh, that's pretty bad. Let me make sure this is still two tenths over. Yep, I can get it. So, what's the other one then? So for you know some precision block, that's pretty bad. That guy's there. Okay, he's in there. He's wiped off. Where is he gonna fall? That one's yep, two tenths. Oh, oh it's getting even higher, almost three tenths. Can I get that reading again? Two tenths. What's this side? I should have mic'd this gauge pin, but I'm trusting the pin. Oh, this is real bad. Look at this. That's it. Oof. So this one's pathetic. Uh, I should mark that. The other side, try a bigger gauge pin, see how bad that is or good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to redo this guy. That's, yeah, that's way higher, right? Can I go up far enough? We no, cannot do that. Way too high. There. All right, lock that back down. All right, over here, take it down until I get a reading. Down, 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 down. Like I said, if somebody can explain to me in the comments why you would want a matched pair, let me know. All right, so that's, that's three and a half, that's almost 
four tenths, right? Yeah, very close to four on this side. This one's better. <laughs> so this is only a couple of tenths off. What's the other one? Which one was this? This was the this was the real bad one on this side. Alright. So if this one's good on both sides, I need to label the other one. Where's it gonna go? Alright. Looks like it's about six tenths above the one on this side. Ooh, this one's really bad. Wow. It still reads six tenths. Yep. All right. So these are pretty bad for precision sterets. I mean, there is some marks in here. They were used. I picked them up from a machinist. But I've ordered some cheap Chinese ones. Let's see how they come out. They're supposed to be within two tenths everywhere. So that's just my rambling on playing with these things. All right, let's try cheap Chinese. $39 from DMI Imports on um, eBay. So I never dealt with that company before. The reason that I wanted it, not because these are that bad, but if you're trying to clamp something small, the vice jaw isn't high enough to hit this. Because I'll clamp it, uh, well, I guess like that. Burnk, you know. So, I can't clamp small stuff in this. I can the big stuff, because the jaw will hit that surface there. So, I figured, let me get these guys and see <laughs> how good or bad they are. Cheap Chinese, but... Um, Alright, so i got to reposition here. Lower this a little bit. Or right there. Oh, that's pretty close, huh? Oh, actually, I got to loosen this. Well, that's good enough. Hopefully, uh, I'm looking at the camera. You guys, I did better with the lighting this time. You guys should actually be able to see the needle. So, where's the reading? Come on. There we go. Good luck trying to hit something. But All right, so where are we at? I'm at a tenth over a thou. And it should be repeatable. Yep, tenth over a thou on this side is two tenths over, right? Yep. Almost, it's more like a tenth and a half. So, okay, so that one's a tenth over, this guy. Uh, that's a tenth under a half there. All right, repeats. No, that went over. All right, what am I doing? Yeah, that's over. Sometimes we just slide it sideways. And it comes down about, not even a tenth. Go back on it. Yeah, that guy is pretty good. This guy, try going sideways. See what happens here. It's not even moving. That's interesting. So I'm dealing with needle bounce somehow. Turn him around. Yep, that's pretty darn good, man. Wow. Sheesh. But the key is the V-groove. See how good it is, huh? Over. Oh, that one's moving just a tad. Wow. Alright, so let's see how good they are this way, huh? And I'll loosen this up. Because i got to take it up a bit. That's a lot. There. Lock that back down. Alright, so I gotta find the peak here. There we go. Is that the peak? That's the peak. One and a half. If I come down here, I've got the peak is uh, two tenths high. Three tenths. Yeah, three tenths high. Right? Yep, that's three tenths high. This side is oh what did I say? This is one and a half and a tenth. Right? Doesn't go any higher. 
almost hits the four. Uh, I'll call that one and a half and a tenth. And I'll call this one and a half. Whoa, that's quite a bit now. So that's four tenths off. It's not too bad. What's this guy going to do? That's like one and a half and a tenth also, huh? And this one? Same kind of angle thing. This is like more like three tenths off. But, shish. So, for cheap Chinese, it could be a burr. I haven't, I haven't actually just lapped it once to say. I should do that and then I'll just check it again off camera. But uh, that's not bad for that much, a uh, little bit of money. I was watching Randy Richard in the shop, a video not too long ago here, where his wife, I believe it was a garage sale, came home from a garage sale with this brass screwdriver set. And I was kind of bummed because that was, I had that set. I think it was Santa Claus, it was five years old, and I use it a lot doing my electronics and whatever. But I must have thrown the set out because uh, you know, I haven't seen it in a long time. Went looking in a couple of spots where it could be and it's not there, so I guess I threw it out. So I was bummed watching Randy, you know, he was, his set was missing one of these inside pieces and so he spent a lot of time and a great job reproducing it. So he's got the full set again. But then um, the other day my daughter comes home from a garage sale, not realizing the significance of this, picks it up for a buck, hey, dad might like this, and gives it to me, complete with the box. And I love it too, because it goes, this versatile tool is now toy. And yet they write paperweight super on it. So, five in one, handy tool. I've already spent a lot of time. It was badly tarnished to um, clean it up. Knurling was really difficult. I don't know if it's solid brass. I'm afraid to put this in the buffer if I'm going to take off something. But it's pretty heavy head, so I think it is brass. But yeah, it's like, wow, the whole thing. I mean, somebody has used it because there's nicks in there. So, I, yeah, I didn't have to do too much. Just removing the oxidation, just crud all over it. But they give you the Phillips, the flat blade. Mine didn't have a Phillips. I remember the original set. I don't think Randy's did either. And it goes all the way down to nothing. So there's the whole thing. Pretty cool. So I sent Randy's um, video, a link to his video, to my daughter, and she goes, oh, now she gets it. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of wish I still had my original set from when I was little. So I just kind of wanted to share this, get it all back together. I don't know how he figured out the threads, because, yeah, he was saying he's trying to figure it out. He's only got two or three threads to guess at what it is. If I would have had this, I could have told him. I could have put a threading die on it or something. But So, I got it. Thrilled to death with it. Now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> put it, store it someplace, right? Sometimes you just stumble across things. $5.39 Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Auto trim kit removal. This is just... Wow, this is not cheap. <laughs> Very heavy duty. I know this this one, I couldn't tell in the picture if it was plastic or metal. It is metal, guys. I had put a magnet on it. Yeah, it's metal. So this is for removing door panels. Probably a lot of other stuff. But, geez, um, for that kind of price, because there's quite a few times I've tried to get something off a piece of trim and you got to use a metal screwdriver and you're messing up the paint and you're careful as all get out. But there you go. What? One, two, three, four, five piece set for $5.39. Get it while it lasts. 